Good morning. It looks like we got a packed house today and what a great decision that you've made to spend time investing in your spiritual life. Life can really go by really fast and you could actually convince yourself that you have no time for God. Now what you want to do is if you're ever going to make time for what's, if you're going to spend time doing what's important, you're going to have to make time for it just like you did today. But it's an investment and where you make investments, you will have a return. You have a return in your emotions, in your family, and, and most of all for eternity. I'm so glad you're here today. So we're going to be talking, for, if you're here for the first time, we're going to be studying the Bible and we're going to be talking about really purpose. What's our purpose in life? And, and one of our purposes in life is to pass on our life or our, our faith to someone else. After you leave this earth, what did you teach? What did you pass on to somebody else? And the most important thing you could do is pass on your faith, especially to your children. They're going to be faced with a lot of temptation, a lot of struggles in life, and equip them for life. It's the greatest thing you could ever do. But today we're going to be talking about making disciples, and we're going to talk about what that means. But you'll never reproduce something you're not. You'll reproduce who you are. So the more you grow, the more you can help others grow. Does anybody really want to grow? We're giving you the channel to grow, and, and we're also going to ask for some commitments today. And if you want to go to the next level in life or next level in anything, it requires a next level commitment. By the time we're done today, you're going to have an opportunity to become an official member of the Way World Outreach. I've seen it every single time. People come up for the first time and they say this, this is my home church. And they end up going to, they end up going to the membership class. And I want to shake hands with everyone that shows up. And I want to know who is a member of the church. I would love to say hi to you. Love to shake your hand and just and begin that relationship with the church. And I would love to just say hi to you. And plus, if you don't want to come for any other reason, we got lunch for you. All right. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to study your word. And every single person here is so important. There's not a person in this room that you don't have a plan for. And when we live according to your plan, things are great. The Bible says, your word, God, your word says that all things work together for good for those that love you and are called according to your purpose. When we're living that life of purpose, Father, things do work out for good. When things are in order, our life gets in order. So today we prioritize you by giving us, giving you the first day of the week. We're here to worship you and thank you for what you've done. And we're also here to learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You know, last month we focused on soul winning and the end result was 3,000 people exactly made confessions of faith here at our altars in the last 30 days. Let's give the Lord a hand for 3,000 souls confessing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It was really cool because after service, we'd have baptisms every service and people were getting baptized in their clothes and, and they were going home wet, but they were going home saved. It was amazing. But now we have a, a dilemma. The question is, who's going to take care of these people? Who's going to mentor them? What we found in the United States is that most churches have become entertainment centers. They're places that people visit, but they're not places where people are trained to actually be disciples and make disciples of Jesus Christ. When Jesus called the disciples, he didn't just call them. He called them and then he told them, if you follow me, if you accept the call, I'll make you fishers of men. That means I'm calling you and I'm going to give you some responsibility. I'm going to train you. But and then after I train you, you're going to have to go out there and make disciples. Train some people. As I teach you, you teach them. 88, there's a stat that I read. 88% of Americans own a Bible. Isn't that interesting? And 61% of homes have four Bibles in their homes. But this is a problem. The majority of Christians only read their Bible four times a year. Imagine if we checked in on Facebook and Instagram and Netflix only four times a year. Maybe our lives would be healthier. 
But I think we got our priorities wrong. We're stuck on entertainment. And even the church has become a place of entertainment. But it's not a place of equipping anymore. And we are equipping you to not only be a disciple of Jesus Christ, but to find your purpose and pass on your faith and make disciples of Jesus Christ. It's the greatest, most rewarding thing you'll ever do in your life. Truth. God has given every believer the commission to be a disciple that makes disciples. God has given every believer the commission to be a disciple that makes disciples. And in Matthew 28, 18 is where we find that. And this is a review scripture from last week. It says, Jesus came up and said to his disciples, all authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. If we put this in context, this is after he resurrected from the dead. He has a final meeting with his disciples. And he wants to make sure, I trained you, but I trained you for this. I spent these three years with you. I resurrected from the dead. And I'm going to heaven, but I'm leaving you with a commission. I'm leaving you with a mission. And I want you to understand it. The highest authority in the universe is speaking to you. And this is what I want you to do, verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Help the people learn of me, believe in me, obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. These are questions that we need to ask ourselves again. And this is a question, who's discipling you? It's very important for you to be able to be a place that you're teachable and actually you're being mentored, that someone's actually mentoring you. They've learned it. They're teaching you so you can grow. This is God's form of passing on his faith from one generation to the next generation. Today, there's at least 2.3 billion people that confess to be Christians. I don't know how many of them are real disciples, but the truth is that Jesus impacted those 11 disciples, and those 11 disciples did a pretty good job because today we got thousands of people even in this room right now because Jesus passed on a mission to 11 disciples to make disciples of all nations. What's a commission? A commission is... It means this, it's the definition, it's to formally choose someone to do a special piece of work, an instruction, command, or duty given to a person or group of people. So Jesus is officially, formally choosing us to do this work. And he says, go and make disciples. Disciples are not going to, are not going to just become accidentally. Someone's going to have to intentionally make a decision that I am going not only to be a disciple, I am going to make disciples. I accept the call. But the word make is interesting because it's really simple. It means this, to teach and instruct others to obey the commands of Jesus Christ. My mother, every single week, we had a Bible study in our home at least once a week. And I remember when I was a little boy, not only did we have a Bible study in our home at least once a week, if it wasn't two or three times a week, teaching me the Bible, going over the stories. Um, but she went further than that. When, when we used to have Sunday school, and she was one of the Sunday school teachers. And, and when I graduated from second grade to third grade to fifth grade to sixth grade, guess who was graduating with me? My mother. My mother was not only teaching me at home, she was discipling me at the church. She was not leaving it up to anyone. She was discipling me. And she was training me to actually teach others. She goes, I'm making you a disciple so you can disciple others. And I remember in our church, I was in a, in a real small church. Uh, I, I think we had 15 to 20 people for 15 years. But this is maybe 30 and sometimes on a special occasion 50. But I remember one day the, the Sunday school teacher, she fired herself. She got so upset with all the kids, she was cussing in Sunday school. She said something like this, sit your A down. Well, all the little boys and girls, they went and spoke to their mommies. And Sarah, a Sunday school teacher, teacher was cussing. She taught us how to cuss. 
Now the problem was because we weren't real good as a church of making disciples and training people to teach the word, this is what happened. They had no one to replace the teacher. So my mother, this is what she did because she was training me for 12 years. I was 12 years old. She went to the pastor and she goes, I know someone that could teach the kids. And the pastor thought she was going to say, I could teach him. And she said, no, my son could teach him. He goes, he's 12 years old. He's 12 years old, but he knows the word. I've taught him well. And I remember she comes home after church. She goes, Marco, you are now the new Sunday school teacher. I go, I'm 12. She goes, I've already trained you. You just go over there and you share the stories that I've shared with you and I've taught you. You go teach them kids because a lot of those kids have not been taught like you. And I remember at 12 years old, I step into this class for the first time with, I don't know, maybe 10 kids. And I go in the 15 kids at the most sometimes. But I went in there for the first time studying, I remember, that whole week a Bible story so I could teach the little kids. You know what that meant? She fully trained a disciple. I did not just, I wasn't just trained to learn the Word of God. I was trained to pass on my faith and teach the Word of God. Making disciples. The word make just means to teach. That means you cannot make disciples without teaching. If you do not make time in your schedule to teach the word of God in your home, to teach the word of God to your kids, to teach the word of God at your workplace, to teach the word of God in your neighborhood, this is what's going to happen. Or teach the word of God on Zoom. No disciples will be made. Because the only way to make disciples is to learn the word, apply the word, and teach the word. Say it with me. Learn the word. Apply the word and teach the word. And what do you teach? You teach what you've learned. Well, I don't know a lot. You don't have to know a lot. Just teach what you've learned. If today you become a great student and you study what we're, if you, gather, you, you grab what we're teaching today, you could go back home and say, you know what? I'm going to teach you how to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Just use the scriptures that are in the Bible. But Jesus promised them something. He was saying, this is a great commission, but this is also a great partnership. I'm never going to assign you to do something and not be there with you. There was a great promise that we read in Scripture, and Jesus said this, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there in their midst. This is what I've seen. I've seen a lot of miracles happen, not only in church Bible studies, but I've seen a lot of miracles happen in home Bible studies. I remember uh, in our neighborhood, um, Lisa started a Bible study with some of the young ladies in the, neighbor, in the neighborhood. Some of, and they were all kids. There were adults that had kids and some teenagers. And Lisa started a Bible study in that neighborhood. And, and those Bible studies would go late into the night. And, and some of them were gang members and some were ex-gang members and some of them were drug addicts. And I remember she, she's teaching this Bible study. And my brother Robert was in the Bible study, but something happened in that Bible study. This is before Pastor Robert was a pastor. He was barely a disciple of Jesus Christ. But in that Bible study, something happened because where there's a teaching of the word, the presence of God is there. The power of God is there. The light of God, the, the light is there. Miracles are there. Now, so... So Elisa's teaching this Bible study, and when she's teaching this Bible study, all of a sudden, one of the girls that was a heavy gang member started manifesting demons. But it was a real scary manifestation. It wasn't like she was just, she was going, I mean, it was like an exorcist movie. I was at work at that time, and my brother Robert, I, remember I came home right around 10 o'clock at night, and my brother Robert was waiting in the middle of the street. And he's waving me down. He goes, Marco, Marco, Lisa right now is casting out demons at the house over there. And he ran to my house. He ran away from that house. And, I went, and so I ran over and I parked my car, ran in. And I saw poor Lisa all by herself, all with newborn baby Christians with this demon manifest. And I, she was 
basically almost everything but twisting her head around. She was gurgling. She was, her tongue was hanging out. She looked like a beast. She was speaking a different language. It was, it was, she was on top of her bed going, ah, it was crazy. And, and Lisa tells those girls that she's teaching a Bible study. She tells, right now you guys need to praise God. So when I got in that room, they were all doing this. Praise God, 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 praise God. It was like that. That's what was happening when I walked in there. Remember that, Lisa? They're like, praise God, praise God. She's like, that's what, praise God, praise God. They didn't want the demon to jump on them. But we helped that young lady to get set free from those demons. And then we started discipling her every day. And what I'm saying, you cannot be teaching the word of God. You cannot be preaching the word of God without his presence being there. God is going to do the saving. God is going to do the delivering. God is going to do the healing. God is going to do the miracles. But he needs you to do the teaching. Wherever there's teaching, people are saved, people are set free, and miracles happen. Let's give God some praise. Give God an opportunity. Look what he says in verse 20, 20 Matthew 28, 20. He says this, teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. So making disciples is teaching. And lo, I am with you always. Remaining with you perpetually regardless of circumstance and on every occasion, even to the end of the age. He's saying, if you'll accept my assignment to make disciples, do you know why there's a lot of believers that are bored? Because you're not fulfilling the great commission. If you're just coming to be entertained, this is going to be the most boring thing in the world. But if you'll get involved and say, I'm here to learn, I'm here to grow, but I'm not just here to learn and grow. I'm going to apply this thing, and I'm going to go to the next level. I'm going to put myself in a position to teach the Word of God. I'm going to teach my kids, husbands, I'm going to teach my wife, come on, wives, mothers, I'm going to teach my children, I'm going to teach my neighbors, and everywhere the Word of God is being taught, miracles happen, and disciples are made, and souls are saved. Stay with me. I am a disciple maker. He goes, I'll be with you. And that word with means I'll be joined with to you. I'll be among you. I'll be in your midst. I'll be connected to you. I'll be by your side. I'll be fighting alongside with you. I'll be fighting alongside. Do you know part of spiritual warfare is just doing what God tells you to do? Do you know some of the spiritual warfare that you're facing are hindering spirits that are trying to stop you? From, he wants you just to be a hearer of the word but never do it. He wants to bring up your past. And, I, and there's an old saying, it's not, biblical, it's not the Bible, but idle time is the devil's workshop. And I've learned this, if you're not doing God's will, you're doing probably the devil's will somewhere. That's going to lead to your life, being, to, it's going to lead to killing, stealing, and destroying. And God is saying, why don't you just say yes to my mission and I promise you this, I'll be with you. I'll join with you. I'll fight those demons that are coming against you in your home. Just seek me first and I'll give, come on, I'll add every single thing to you. When you're about the Father's business of developing people for Jesus Christ, you have his power, you have his miracles. Come on, this is what God is saying. You have my provision. Everything you need is there. I'll guide you. I'll accompany you. I'll help you. I'll provide for you. I'll be in agreement with you. And I'll be behind you. You know what that means? I'll back you. I love this. I'll back you up. I, I'll tell you this. I've, I've faced a lot of spiritual warfare in my life. But I haven't lost one of the battles yet. And I'll tell you why. I, I'm not losing because I'm on a mission. I, I remember another story about, about dealing with casting out a demon. I remember casting out a demon of our fourth and Arrowhead um, campus. That was our first building that we were in. And, and we, were, we're getting, we still get a lot of people that have never been to church. They've been hurt. They've been abused their whole lives. Some of them experienced some real tragedy and trauma in their lives. And, and I remember one day I was helping a young lady get delivered and set free from the torment and demons that she had. She was depressed, she was suicidal, she couldn't sleep at night, she felt she was losing her mind. And I go, honey, let's come, come here, let's, let's pray. And as I began to pray with her, the demons started manifesting 
and started screaming. But I remember this. It was crazy. The demon was look, now looking through her eyes, and he was like this, scared, <laughs> like this. And so I just asked the demon. I had to interview him. I go, what do you see? And the demon says this, I see Jesus, and I see, and I see millions of angels. So I just start playing, I just start playing with the devil a little bit because I want to, I go, what do you see? Look at my eyes. He goes, I see Jesus. I'm telling you this. Now, it doesn't make me any more special than you. If you have the presence of God, come on, if you're a believer, you're not going out there on your own. Jesus is right there with you. Jesus' spirit lives in you. It's time for you to recognize that God has given you his spirit so you can be a powerful witness. So what are the two steps of making disciples of Jesus Christ? Step number one is become a disciple of Jesus Christ. We can only reproduce what we are. Before we can go out there and make a disciple, we must first become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Question, what is a disciple? A disciple is a student or follower of Jesus Christ's teachings, lifestyle, and mission. So when I become a disciple, I become a student or learner. What am I learning? Jesus Christ's teachings. I'm learning his word. I'm learning his lifestyle. And I'm learning his, about his mission. What's a disciple? It's one who belongs to Jesus Christ and accepts him as their, ma as their master and Lord. I don't think we talk about this enough. When you give your life to Jesus, your life and your body and your mind does not belong to you anymore. When you give your life to Jesus, you belong 100% to him. And you know what that means? When he tells you to do something, you just say, yes, sir. When God asks you to obey him, because disciples obey his word, you're not, he's not always going to ask you to do something you want to do. But when Jesus is your Lord, and when Jesus is your master, and when you are a true disciple of Jesus Christ, you say, God, Jesus, your Lord. Man, I really don't want to get rid of this because it's a lot of fun. And God says, get rid of this because I got more fun for you. I got more pleasure for you. I got more. If you'll just give me that, I'll give you true peace. I'll give you true joy. I'll give you a purpose. But following Jesus is not just saying I'm a Christian. I think we got a whole bunch of Christians, but we don't have hardly any disciples. See, the only way to follow Jesus is as a disciple. The only way to follow Jesus is as a... Look at Matthew 4.19. And he said to them, follow me as my disciples, accepting me as your master and teacher, and walk in the same path of life that I walk. And I will make you fishers of men. So Jesus is making it real clear. He does, doesn't just say, believe in me. Do you know there's a lot of people that are believers, but they're not saved yet? They believe that Jesus exists. They're even faithful church members. They'll even add some ministry to it. Like I'll volunteer in children's ministry. But there's a problem. You never became a full disciple of Jesus Christ. All you did was add Christian habits or Christian things or ministry to your sinful life. There has to be a time in your life that you say, I'm done living the way I'm living. Father, Lord, I repent of my sins. You cannot be a Christian, a disciple fornicator. It's getting quiet in here now. Well, I, the reason, the other day, someone was telling me they were a Christian and I had to tell them, you're not a Christian. I say, Pastor, you're judging them. No, this is, by their fruits we'll, we'll know them. I know the lifestyle that he lives. He's never made an all-out commitment to follow Jesus. He's Christian by name, but he's not Christian by commitment. He's not devoted to Jesus Christ yet. I'd be doing him a disservice to make him think that he's okay and he's not okay. I'm not trying to hurt his feelings. I'm just letting him know, son, you ain't there yet. You got to be ready to give up everything to follow Jesus. And if you give up everything to follow Jesus, you'll finally have the freedom 
and the breakthrough and the life that you've always wanted. Give God some praise. Come on. If he's asking you to give your all, he's ready to give his all to you. Follow me as my disciple and I'll make you fishers of men. Can you see that in the call, disciple making is in the call? He didn't say just follow me to follow me. He goes, follow me and I'll prepare you and I'll train you for purpose. And purpose is you'll become fishers of men. And defining fishers of men is you'll become a disciple making person. You know, first service, I think, uh, I love making disciples and I love... I love seeing people come the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I can make disciples anywhere. All I got to do, I remember, I remember one time I was bowling. Have you ever gone to um, Midnight Bowling? I, 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 midnight Cosmic Bowling, yeah. So they have a DJ, they're playing the music, it's all lights and man, all that stuff's going on. <laughs> Sensory overload, right? So, oh, uh, uh, uh. I was bowling horrible. There were so many distractions there. So I went to the DJ. I go, DJ, I go, do you guys have, do you have some Christian music? He goes, I don't know if I'm allowed to do it. No, you're allowed. I give you permission. He goes, I do have some stuff. I go, let's start playing that stuff. So, so I, I convinced him and he started playing it. So now I'll, people don't even know that we're playing Christian hip hop, we're playing Christian rock, we're playing all kinds of, and, and now, now it's, the bowling now is turning into a church, right? So, so now this is what happens, I start bowling, strike, strike, strike. I am not lying. I threw like five, six strikes in a row, like the holy anointing, I'm just. But this is what happened. As soon as we change the atmosphere, putting God's word in that, in that place, I started witnessing to the people right next to me. And they started just listening. And they started, and, and, and the person next to me ended up giving their lives to the Lord. And then all of a sudden, we had three, four backsliders that I haven't seen for years walk right through that door. And that place started, it started turning into a church. And the only reason it started turning into a church, because there was somebody that was willing to change the atmosphere by praising God and teaching the Word of God. So let's talk about this. You can do it anywhere. The power of God can show up anywhere if there's a teacher. Could it be that you're trying to change your kids by just discipline and you're supposed to be trying to change your kids through teaching? Could it be that we're trying to change our world and the United States through politics, and God has given us something stronger than politics. He's actually given us the kingdom of heaven. He's given us the word of God. And what we're missing today in America is more teachers of the word, more disciples that make disciples of Jesus Christ. If you believe that, give the Lord a hand. If you believe that, it's true. We need more churches teaching the word of God. We need more churches passing on responsibility to the people. So there's two, there's two laws of discipleship, and it's the law of leadership. To be a great leader, we must first be a great follower. Jesus will not give us permission to lead his people if, we've, he, if we have not given him permission to lead us. And Luke 16, 12 says, if you have not been trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you anything of your own? The idea is you'll never have your own disciples until you become a disciple. Before we become a great teacher, we must be first become a great student. Before, and I, I'm even, we'll talk to people that want to launch a business. Before you launch a business, work for somebody. Get skill underneath them on, on, on their dime, on their dollar. Learn the business. And then once you master the business, you can launch out your own business. But before you can have a great business, you're going to have to have a great mentor that you submit to. How many understand that? This is what God, he, he, there's a shortcut to this. I mean, what do you mean by that? Is that you could get to a great place if you're willing to be mentored. Law of reproduction, second law. We can only produce 
what and who we are. We'll produce after our own kind. The kind of follower we are is the kind of followers we will reproduce. The kind of leader we are is the kind of leaders we'll reproduce. The kind of disciples we are are the kind of disciples we'll reproduce. You won't re I want you to get this, parents. You'll reproduce who you are. Let's not be those people that say this. Do as I say, but don't do as I do. You're going to produce a whole bunch of weed-smoking gangsters in your house if you're a weed-smoking gangster. Marijuana is not good for me. Believe me, son. I, I don't believe you. I see you smoking weed. I know, it's a, I know the stash is in the garage. We're going to produce a whole bunch of alcoholics. And you could tell them, hey, you know, alcohol is not good for you. I understand that. But there has to be a time in your life that you say, I'm done. I'm done because I got to be a mentor. And I got to be an example to my kids. And there's some things that I enjoy doing, but I don't want this reproduced in my kid's life because I could only reproduce who and what I am. So look at, look at, look at this scripture. See if it makes sense to you. In Genesis 1.12, the earth brought forth plants, vegetation that produces seed according to its own kind. This is very simple. I'm going to teach you something about science. This is how it works. Uh, uh, apple seed produces apple trees. And you could speak to the apple seed and say, seed, I command you to produce lemons. And you could speak lemonade over that apple seed for the rest of your life, but that tree is only going to produce what it is. That seed is only going to produce what it is. But it goes on to say, look at this, very simple. It says, and trees that bear fruit, with its seed in it, with its seed in it, each according to its own kind. And God saw that it was good. Each produces after its own kind. That means if you have an orange, orange, it doesn't have watermelon seed in it. An orange, well, I'm, I'm, you guys are learning some stuff today. An orange has orange seed. And that seed produces more oranges. All it means that God has set this up, that you'll produce what you are. So if you want to start producing more than you are today, it's time for you to start growing. It's time to sign up for Holy Warriors 1, Holy Warriors 2, Holy Warriors 3, and maybe sign up and say, you know, I'm in a discipleship group, but it's time for me to take leadership in my home, and I want to start teaching the Bible in my home. I want to lead a discipleship group. And if you'll just make that decision, we'll train you and we'll teach you. And I guarantee you this, you're going to start seeing God manifest his power. And you're going to start living the life that you've always wanted to live if you'll just take on the commission. So the second step, really easy, is sign up to lead a DG. So first you sign up to be a disciple. And then you sign up to lead a DG or discipleship group. A DG just means discipleship group. Unless we sign up to be a disciple maker and make time for it on our busy schedules, we won't do it. I just said it. I want to say it more time. Unless you sign up to do it, you won't do it. One of these days I'm going to teach. You got to forget about one of these days. That you got to sign up and then you got to put it on your schedule. Like my, my discipleship group meets at 9 o'clock every single Wednesday. I'm prepared to teach my discipleship group. I wake up, so you guys know, I wake up probably around 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning to get ready for my discipleship group. I take it as serious that I'm speaking to thousands of today and even online because I'm a disciple maker. And I, this is what I want to do, produce. I want to produce after my own kind. I want to produce leaders that care about the people and they're prepared and bringing value to them. So I prepare and bring value to my team so they can bring value to their disciples. You guys understand that? You'll produce what you are. So that's why it's, it's very important that we say, okay, I'm ready to become something greater than I've ever been. I'm ready to be discipled. Now, God is looking for believers that are willing to go and make disciples. And Matthew 20, 19 says, go, therefore, and make disciples. The word go means to lead. It means to go and do something. It just, it's not just going. I'm going to do something. 
What are you intentionally going to do? I'm going to go make disciples. I, I have a, a, a vision that I have, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a documentary myself with maybe one more person, and I'm going to go to an area like L.A. and pick the worst neighborhood I could find, and this is what I want to do. I want to build a church from nothing to a grand opening day in 90 days. So I'm going to go out there with no money, but I'm going to go out there with the Bible. I'm going to go out there with teaching, and I'm going to go into the hood. And I'm going to show everybody that you can make disciples in any hood, in any city, in any nation. If someone's willing to go, they don't know my name. They don't know I'm Pastor Marco. They don't have to know Pastor Marco. I'm not going under the credentials of a man. I'm not going under, come on, some kind of doctorate. I'm going over there as a man of God, a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm going to preach the word, and I'm going to knock on doors, and this is what's going to happen. We're going to see God healing people on the streets. Come on, God saving people on the streets. And we're going to document it. And then one day, in 90 days, we're going to find a church and open up. And I guarantee you this, we'll have over 500 people from the hood coming. They're going to give their lives to Jesus because wherever the gospel and the word is taught, disciples are made. How many believe that could happen? I'm working on it right now. Go. And the word go means to become an, an adherent. An adherent means this, a person who follows and upholds a leader's cause. God wants you to be an adherent. I'm an adherent to Jesus' teachings and his cause. I follow and I carry out Jesus' cause. What we need now are more disciples that are ready to say, God, I'm not just here to just go through life and breathe air. I want to learn this stuff, I want to master it, and I want to teach it to others. And all you got to do is just be willing, just like the disciples. They weren't a perfect bunch, and I think that's why God showed us all their faults, to let us know if they could do it with me, you could do it. And we see Peter, he was a hardhead. But Jesus made him, made him his right-hand man. I would have never chose Peter, you're crazy. I mean, you, you know, like the chapter before Jesus resurrects from the dead, Jesus, Peter denies Jesus. People start asking, are you a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ? He goes, no, nah, I ain't. And it wasn't like some soldier came up to him. It was a little girl. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? No. Another girl came up to him. And I think God's showing us if Peter could do it, we could do it. Of course, we need the presence of God, but we need a yes. God needs a yes for you. And if you'll teach it, God will show up and God will do miracles. God will use you. And we see Peter the third time, he just doesn't say, no, I don't know him. He starts cussing. He goes, blankety, blanket, blank. I don't know that G. I don't know Jesus. And when they heard him cuss, I guess he ain't because Jesus would never talk like that. But even before that, this is what happened before that. Jesus is being arrested, and then Jesus takes his knife out and cuts someone's ear off. Imagine that happening in church. Someone cuts somebody's ear off and goes, that's your leader. But God chose him. And after he resurrected from the dead, he had a private meeting with Peter. He goes, Peter, I still got a call on you. You still have the great commission on you. I want you to get my spirit. And then you go out there and tell everybody what I've taught you. Tell everybody about me. And I will use you. I love it. See, if you're willing to go, and by signing up to be a DG leader, we will train you. There's only three qualifications to be a, a discipleship group leader. One is that you're a disciple yourself. That you've given your life to Jesus Christ. You've been saved. You've been born again. Number two is that you complete Holy Wars 1. And if you've not completed Holy Wars 1, you can still sign up. We'll get you through Holy Wars 1. And then after that, you're going to go through DG training. We're going to teach you how to lead or facilitate a, a, a home Bible study. And maybe you want to start off with just your kids and your family. That's fine. But start teaching the word somewhere and start where you're at. If you only have one person that's willing to listen to you, that's all you need. Just start off with one person. Work with that one person. I've learned this. If you're faithful with one, God will give you two. He'll give you three. I, I start off with just those ten kids in a, 
in a Bible study and, and teaching Sunday school. After that, as I was in my 20s, I, I, I taught uh, my first two adults that I taught were a couple that were married, but they, were having, they had the worst marriage in the world. And I remember they, they asked me to go mentor them. So I'd visit their house. I went for a whole year and a half. Their marriage never got better. I'm serious. But I, st- I went and I prepared like I was teaching to 10,000 people. I did my best. I did, I, did my, I did everything I could. But as I was faithful with that little Sunday school class and I was faithful with that couple, God says, okay, now I'm going to make you a youth pastor. And I want you to mentor teenagers in the church. And I started mentoring the teenagers and I had them over my house for five years straight at my house every single Tuesday. And they were getting saved. Their lives were being transformed. And many of our leaders that are here today were in that youth group over there in my house. And now they they're disciples, but they're disciples that make disciples. And I really believe it's not too late to turn your family around. It's not too late to turn America around. It's not too late to turn, come on, your city around. It's not too late. All we need to do is start teaching the Word of God. We are disciples that make disciples. If you're in agreement, let's give God just a little bit of praise and say, I'm in. God send me. I will go. And this is the last scripture I want to use here. And it's Isaiah 6 8 says, After I heard the Lord ask, Is there anyone I can send? Will someone speak for us? And Isaiah says, I'll go, I, I answered. Send me. I love it. Oh man, what the it's passion. Exclamation point. He's not just saying, Oh, all right, well, there's nobody else, I'll go. We need to get that passion. Someone is dependent on you going. We got to stop complaining how bad things are because we are the answer. The church is the answer for America. The church is the answer for San Bernardino. The church is the answer, come on, for your neighborhood and your city. How many believe if all of us accept this assignment, 11 of them accepted the assignment and look at the work that they did. Right now there's thousands of us here in this assignment and this commission. If we'll just say yes and say, God, I'll go, send me. He goes, well, let's go then. Because he's going to go with you. And no matter where you're at today, I want to let you know that you're not disqualified. You're qualified. And if you're like, I don't know, you're qualified to be forgiven. You're qualified to have a new start. And I will tell you this, all of us have messed up. But don't for- focus on all the times you've messed up. It's just funny how the devil works. He'll get you messing up and compromising, and then he'll just accuse you like crazy. Look at you. You call yourself a Christian? You call yourself a believer? Yeah, right. And I want you to understand, if you're hearing voices like that, it's not God. God is saying something like this. Come. I don't care how deep your sin is. I'll forgive you. I'll make you white as snow. I'll make you brand new. I'm officially calling you to follow me and be my disciple. And I'll train you and I'll empower you. But you have to make a decision. Can you hear the call of Jesus? That he's saying, come, come. Who who becomes a disciple maker or disciple? Those that accept the call and say, Jesus, I'll accept your call. I'll follow you. If this is your first time here, you don't have to be a, a professional Christian All you need to do is be willing, and God will do the rest. He loves you so much. He said, Pastor, my marriage is messed up. Don't worry about that. Say yes to Jesus. You come with, man, Pastor, I'm addicted. Come. You don't don't overcome an addiction. Come to Jesus. You come to Jesus. He's the one that will set you free. You come with your pain. You come with your hurt. You come with your failures. And that's the miracle. He'll make you brand new. And today if you're here, It's because truly, this is a brand new start for you. It can be. But who becomes disciples of Jesus Christ? Those that say yes. And I want to ask you a real serious question. I have a friend right now that's in the hospital. and He had a horrible lung disease that that went from zero 
to 100% bad in a few months. He, I, I, work, I work with him in a car business and he was always working out. He was a bodybuilder. And then he started coughing some months ago. And the, the owner of the company says, hey, um, his name's Ruben. Go, Ruben, you, you should check that out. And when they checked it out, he had a lung disease that was taking over his lungs and his heart, lungs were hardening. And within like three or four months period of time, he couldn't breathe. He went to Cedar sinai and checked in three weeks ago. They had him on the machine. They just did a lung transplant on him. That's the only way he could live. And they just tried to disconnect him from the breathing machine and his lungs still weren't working. And they just texted me today and, and I text him, I'm still praying that he'll come back. And, but this I want you to know, the life will throw you curveballs. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. And what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What I care about Reuben, I want him whole, I want him healed, and I'm praying for him. But most of all, I want Reuben saved. He's heard the gospel through me. But I don't know if he's saved yet. And, and, and he doesn't want any visitors, but, I, I, but this is what I'm going to do. I already, to, I already told everybody, I'm going to invade that hospital whether he wants me there or not. And I'm going to speak to Reuben. I'm going to do my best to go in there. And, and the reason is I care about Reuben's soul. And I'm going to tell you this, I care about your soul. And without the Lord, this is all we have is addiction. Because we will say this, and I'm not saying you have to be addicted to drugs. You could be addicted to bad behavior. And, just, and you say, man, I'm, uh, you could be addicted to anger. And you could say, man, I'm, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. I won't do it again. But I'll tell you this, unless Jesus sets you free, you're going to do it again. And you come even with your, your like, you got passions or lusts that have been taken over. Say, I don't know if I can live for God and live a pure life. You come to Jesus. He told the adulterous woman, come. And he goes, your sins are forgiven. He goes, go and sin no more. I will help you. God will, God never commands you to do something. He won't help you to do. You can live a life beyond your passions, beyond your addictions. Jesus can set you free and make you a new person. But most of all, if you were to die today, do you know where you'd spend eternity? So I want you to think about it for a second. Let that settle. I'm not sure, Pastor. I'm going to let you know the reason I'm talking about this, and we're talking about the most important subject that could ever be brought up to you, is about your eternal life. Have you given your life to Jesus? Have you surrendered your life to him? Have you truly become a disciple of Jesus Christ? You say, Pastor, I'm not sure. Well, don't leave here unsure. You're one decision away. And Jesus loved you so much that he publicly died naked on a, half naked on a, on a, on a cross, and if you were to ask him, why are you doing this? Why are you letting him beat you? Why are you letting him put those crown of thorns, on, those, those nails in your hands? He would say this, because I love you, and I want you to be with me now and forever. And without that, there's an emptiness in your heart, and you'll keep looking, and you'll keep searching, but you'll never find it. A drug can't do it. A relationship can't do it. A girl can't do it. A guy can't do it. I know you have a broken heart, but he'll heal you of your broken heart. Stop trying to fix you. There's one that can make you whole. There's one that can fix you. There's one that loves you and he'll forgive you. He's not here to judge you. He's here to save you. So I want you to... I'm going to ask a question. If today you say, Pastor, I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want the gift of eternal life. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand when I count to three. I'm not even asking you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I've learned this. If you're ashamed of God here, you'll never live for him over there. You'll never live for him outside these walls. The Bible says if you confess me before men, Jesus says this, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. I'm telling you, he's calling you. This is your moment of truth. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. One. You come right now where you're at. And I want you to just raise your hand when I say three. This is going to be the biggest decision. There might even be like, man, I'm feeling some anxiety with me. I'm telling you right now, it's your moment. Your life will change forever if you give your life to Jesus. This crowd is just going to erupt in praise when you give your life to Jesus. They're going to congratulate you. Two. And when I say three, I want you to raise your hands over this building. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Or I want to recommit my life to the Lord. I want to get on fire for God. I'm done playing. I'm going to go all the way in and become a full disciple of Jesus Christ. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. Proud of you. I see the hand. Proud of you. So proud of you. Two here. Proud of you. Proud of you here. 
over there in that corner, way in the back over there. Keep raising your hands. I see the hand there. Proud of you. Proud of you. It takes a real man to do this. Come on, Rick. Go anybody else in the back. In the back. I see those hands. I see those hands way over there. I want all of us to stand up. Let's all stand up. We're going to dismiss in just a second, but before we do, I'm going to ask those that raise their hands to do something. Will you give me the honor and the privilege of praying with you? I want to pray with you. And this is your first step of following Jesus. You got to make a decision. You already made a decision. Now follow Jesus. Those that raise their hands, I want you to get out of your seats and come up here real quick. Just come up here. We're going to pray with you. And, and, come on, we're going to pray with you and welcome you. Come on, let's give them a hand as they're coming up. In heaven, there's a, there's a party. Ask your neighbor, you want to grow up there? I'll grow up there with you. Ask your neighbor, you want to grow up there? I'll grow up there with you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Awesome. Come on. Proud of you. New day. Come on, let's give them a hand. Come on, church. Come on. There. People online, just stand up right where you're at. This is your moment. Give your life to Jesus. God's spirit is ready to invade your living room, invade your car. The depression is going to go. That suicidal spirit that making you feel like you're nothing. We're going to break the power of that right now. <coughs> They're still coming. Come on, church. They're still coming. This is what we're talking about. The gospel is preached. The word of God's preached. People are responding. Tony's giving his life to the Lord. Come on, let's give a hand for Tony. It takes a real man to do that. Hallelujah. Proud of you guys. We're going to pray. Membership classes after this. There's another level of commitment. Stop expecting a next level life without next level commitment. For some of you, it's just saying, I'm done. I'm going to make this my official church home. And you got to do that to take ownership of what God wants you to take ownership of. Allow yourself to be part of a family. We love you. We're not perfect, but we love you. And I guarantee you this. This is what I guarantee you. I'm going to live and die in San Bernardino. There's going to be something consistent in your life. It's going to be this church. I'm not going nowhere. I don't care what they, I don't, I am not for sale. I am here committed to be your pastor until the day I breathe my last breath. We're going to be here with you, okay? We could do this together. We're going to pray. We're going to give our lives to Jesus. And I'm going to ask you to do this. After you do this, sign up for your next step. Holy Wars classes. We're going to help you with that. You don't have to know everything. Just be willing. Join the classes. Sign up for membership class after. We got food for you. And then give us a year of your life. Keep coming to church for a year. And I guarantee you, your life will never be the same. You won't even recognize you. God's going to mold you and make you. I see it happen all the time. And there's people I've seen the first day like you. And I'm going to tell you this, you're not an accident. You're not a mistake. God loves you. I don't care if someone told you you're an accident. You are not an accident. You're not a mistake. God has a plan for your life. He has, come on, he, he, he has a purpose for your life. And you're, gonna, you're starting right now giving your life to Jesus. And you know what we're doing? We're breaking up with our sin and we're breaking up with the devil. We're going to break up with the depression, all the anxiety, all the fear, all the confusion in the name of Jesus. And whatever you've done that you feel, man, I'm so guilty about it, you're going to receive forgiveness. You're going to forgive people that hurt you, and then you're going to forgive yourself. You no longer need to beat up yourself if God's forgiven you. Jesus came for sinners like you and me. Thank God that he loves us, and his grace and his mercy is available to us. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you brought me here today. Thank you. For dying on the cross, for suffering, for my sins, because you love me so much. Today, I open my heart and I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I surrender my whole life to you. I repent of all my sins. Set me free from all addictions, all bad habits all demons and fill me now with your spirit today i receive the free gift of eternal life 
I receive your Holy Spirit. I'm a new person. I'll never be the same again. And I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. I want to make sure. I don't know. We probably got close to 100 people up here. Surrender their lives to the Lord. I want to make sure we pray with every single person.